Okay, so good day class. For today's topic, we'll discuss uh, reclassification of uh, investments. So reclassification, so diba, we have three, three reclassifications. You have fair value to profit or loss, amortized cost, and FVOCI. So this time, we reclassify, and you say reclassification, we change the classification of the investment. Let's say, for example, from profit or loss to OCI, or from profit or loss to amortized cost. Okay, so what are the requirements diba, for reclassification? Okay, so according to PFRS 9 paragraph 4.4.1, okay, provides that an entity shall reclassify financial assets only when it changes the business model for managing the financial assets. So take note that we only reclassify financial assets when it changes the business model. Okay, the business model and diba, uh, we have two types of uh, instrument. You have the equity instruments and debt instruments and uh, identifying the business model is only applicable for our debt instruments okay later you will yeah we, we will i will discuss that also okay so where reclassification of course paragraph 5.6.1 provides that an entity shall apply the reclassification prospectively from the reclassification date so Yung application ng reclassification is naka prospective basis. Sa prospectively, ano yung prospective? So the changes will apply from the from the start of change and onwards. That is prospective. So like uh you, you change it today, then uh, the effect is today up to uh, the succeeding periods. That's prospective from the reclassification date. So starting on the reclassification date, the effect will uh to, uh, will take effect on the reclassification date and onwards or the next periods. That's prospective. So, uh, opposite of prospective is retrospective. When you say retrospective, diba? so yung effect niya, i-retro mo from the start. Bali, it change mo yung from the start, the classification, if retrospective yung application. But according to the standard, the classification of the investment uh the application is or the effect is prospectively from the reclassification date. Therefore, the effect will happen from the date of reclassification and onwards. Okay, ito yun. The entity shall not restate any previously recognized gains, losses, and interest. Again, because the effect is prospective, no need to restate diba, the previously recognized gains, losses, and interest. Okay, as defined in Appendix A of PFRS 9, the reclassification date Okay, kailan yung reclassification date? The question now is prospective application from the start of the reclassification date. Okay, question now, kailan yung reclassification date? So, the reclassification date is the first day, take note of this, first day of the reporting period following the change in business model that results in an entity reclassifying financial assets. So, yung reclassification date natin is the first day of the next reporting period or first day of the reporting period following the change in the business model. Diba yung business model natin, it's either hold to collect and hold to collect and sell. Okay, so, or not defined, di ba? If wala, hindi define yung business model niya. Okay, ano ibig sabihin ng reclassification date natin? This means that if a change in business model is in 2019, okay, so if the business model change uh, in 2019, kailan yung reclassification date? So, the reclassification date is January 1, 2020, which is the first day of the next reporting period after the reclassification. So, take note of this. Uh, so, the reclassification date is the first day of the next reporting period after the reclassification. Okay, sir, is it necessary that uh, every January 1? No. Diba? It's not necessary na every January 1 is the reclassification date because ang sabi dito, next reporting period. What if you, you have a fiscal year, diba? Not, not, not calendar year, you're using fiscal year. So, every, uh, like you start June 1, you end on uh, May 31, let's say for example. So, the, the, the reclassification date in that case, let's say for example, June 1, 2019 to May 31, 2020, okay, the reclassification date is on June 1, 2020, not on January 1 because diba, 
here next reporting period diba first day of the next reporting period what if diba your reporting period is on a quarterly basis naka interim reporting tayo so say interim diba pwede yan hindi one year for example every three months yung reporting natin quarterly okay so so kailan yung uh, rest, uh, reclassification date natin like for example for the first quarter if your reporting period is on a quarterly basis the first quarter if you reclassify the investment within the first quarter between january february and march therefore your reclassification date is on april 1 because that is your next reporting period okay take note of that it, 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 it's not necessary that uh Every January 1, diba? next report, first day of the next reporting period, depending on the company, diba? if their reporting period is on an interim basis or like for example, quarterly basis, so the reclassification date is on the first day of the next reporting period, which is first day of April, April 1, second quarter reporting. Okay, so... Yan yung reclassification date natin. However, the entity must disclose the change in business model in the 2019 financial statements because the change in the entity's business model is a significant and demonstrable event. So therefore, we need to disclose uh, the changes in the business model uh, on our 2019 financial statement. So that uh, starting January 1, 2020, it was disclosed already in 2019. So the readers will also know that uh, starting January 1, 2020, iba na yung classification ng investment natin. Okay. But there are exemptions from reclassification. So, sino yung exempted from reclassification? Diba? Equity investments, take note, diba? Equity investment held for trading or measured at FVPL cannot be reclassified by reason of the consequential requirement of PFRS 9. Actually, all equity investments cannot be reclassify, diba? So, because, diba, there is only reclassification when there is change in business model. And uh, we need to identify, diba, essential yung business model pagdating sa debt instruments. But under equity investments or equity instruments, diba, FBPL lang, tsaka FVOCI. So, depending on ano yung election ng company as so the investments, if for, uh, for OCI ba or FBPL ba. But uh, here, Diba, all equity investments cannot be reclassified because again, diba, yung business model important necessary sa, sa debt instruments. Okay, equity investments measured at FBOCI by irrevocable election cannot be reclassified simply because the election is irrevocable. So again, it's still an equity investment. Okay, letter C, only debt investment can be reclassified because the change in business model applies appropriately to debt investment or debt security. So, diba? so the business model is uh, appropriately applies to our debt instruments. So, that's why we only reclassify debt instruments. Diba? So, yung bonds, investment in bonds natin. However, debt investment measured at FVPL by irrevocable election cannot be reclassified simply because the election is irrevocable. So, if the debt instrument or investment is uh, classified as FBPL by irrevocable election or ito yung fair value option natin, di ba? because the election is irrevocable, of course, we cannot reclassify the debt investment. Therefore, yung qualified lang na debt investment classification is yung FBPL na hindi irrevocable election if the business model is not defined. Then, amortize costs and FDOCI na debt instruments. Okay, so ito yung requirements ng reclassification natin. So, there are six possible reclassifications, diba? So, first is uh, reclassification from FBPL to amortize costs. So, ano yung requirement if we reclassify the investment uh, debt instrument, so debt instrument from uh, fair value to profit or loss to amortize costs? So, according to PFRS 9, uh, 5.6.3 provides the following. If a financial asset is reclassified from FBPL to amortized cost, diba? so FBPL to amortized cost, medyo from simple to complicated. Why? Because diba, under FBPL, no need to amortize. Diba? No need to amortize a discount or premium. No need to prepare the amortization table. But uh, when we reclassify the FBPL to amortized cost, from no amortization to with amortization. 
Diba? So, medyo, medyo complicated to na reclassification. So, anong gagawin natin if we reclassify the FBPL to amortized cost? Sir, anong case uh, pag ma-reclassify ito? Diba? Since not defined yung business model under FBPL, what if, diba, the company decided to change the business model to hold to collect? Because, diba, hold to collect uh, and SPPI is under amortized cost, classified as amortized cost. So, from not defined business model to hold to collect business model. So, di ba, from FBPL to amortized cost. Ano yung requirement, di ba, if this is the case, this is the reclassification. So, ito, the fair value at the reclassification date becomes the new carrying amount of the financial asset at amortized cost. Di ba, initial measurement, fair value. Subsequent measurement, fair value. How about amortized cost? Initial measurement, fair value plus transaction cost. Subsequent measurement is at amortized cost. So, if ito yung nangyari, ito yung reclassification natin, yung fair value at the reclassification date, di ba? Kung ano yung fair value ng investment debt security mo, debt investment mo, at the reclassification date, that becomes the new carrying amount of the financial asset at amortized cost. So, ano mangyayari dito, di ba? So, yung fair value at reclassification date, sana yung carrying amount ng investment mo classified under amortized cost. So, therefore, this is now the starting point of your amortization table. Okay, this is now the amount, this is the, the kumbaga, initial investment mo dun sa amortization table mo. Okay. B, the difference between the new carrying amount of the financial asset at amortized cost and the face amount of the financial assets shall be amortized through profit or loss over the remaining life of the financial asset using the effective interest method. Since amortized cost na yung classification ng investment natin, therefore subject to amortization using effective interest method. Sino yung i-amortize natin? Yung discount or premium. But the question now, how do we compute the discount and the premium? So ito lang, the difference between the new carrying amount or the fair value at reclassification date compared natin doon sa face amount natin, di ba? Of the bonds or the investments. So, magkano yung face amount compared doon sa new carrying amount natin, then that's the uh, premium or discount. So, if the carrying amount, new carrying amount is uh, greater than the face amount or the principal of the investment in bonds, Okay, so there is premium, di ba? Sobra. Sobra yung binayaran, kumbaga, sobra yung carrying amount compared dun sa face value. But uh, if lower naman yung carrying amount compared dun sa face amount or principal amount ng bonds natin, then there is discount. So, di ba? Subject to amortization. So, we amortize the premium or discount through profit or loss. Di ba? So, say through profit or loss because, di ba, when we, when, when we amortize premium or discount, we use the investment account and the interest income account. Therefore, recorded under profit or loss over the remaining life of the financial asset. Of course, diba, kung magkano na lang yung life na natira, diba? because like for example, 5 years yung bonds, 2 years sa naging FBPL, 3 years sa naging amortized cost. So therefore, we amortize the discount or premium 3 years na lang because diba, FBPL sa for 2 years. Okay, ito. Ito yung mahirap, letter C. In this uh, reclassification, a new effective interest rate must be determined based on the new carrying amount or fair value at reclassification date. So, when we reclassify from FBPL to amortized cost, diba? because under amortized cost, we need to identify the, the nominal rate and the effective interest rate. Because the new carrying amount, we need to compute a new uh, effective interest rate that would equal to the new carrying amount using the present value formulas. Okay, so, kailangan natin mag-identify, determine based on the new carrying amount or fair value at reclassification date. So, we need to compute a new effective interest rate that would equal to the new carrying amount by computing the present value of the bonds or of the investment. So, ito yung tinatawag natin na interpolation. So, sir, how do we compute the new effective interest rate? So, actually, it's a trial and error process like, yeah, like, what if I try to compute 10%? Sige, 10%. Ilan yung present value nito? Equal ba to sa bagong new carrying amount? Or sa, sa new carrying amount? So, if hindi, di ba? So, what if 10.1, 10.2, 10.3, 10.4? 10.4? So, it's very, very dragging yung time. Di ba? So, if if you do the like manual, like trial and error. 
So, meron tayong formula dyan. So, tinatawag ito interpolation. So, interpolation, you are finding, looking for a new effective interest rate to equal to the new carrying amount. So, ito yung tinatawag nating interpolation. So, basically, di ba, actually, there's a formula in the book. But, uh, I... Uh, I got this formula from other books, so I just uh, re reinvented the 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 format format, but it's still the same the same computation, the same concept. So this formula, di ba? This formula, you need this formula to compute the new effective interest rate. It's still a trial and error process, but uh, but here, di ba? You can you can compute the exact rate by just identifying two rates lang, di ba? So uh, I think it's in between these rates. So, eh, hindi ka gaya kanina, di ba, na you need to compute isa-isa. Isa-isahin mo uh, to compute the new effective interest rate like 10.1, 10.2, di ba? It will take you long time. Okay, so, this is still at, an, a try and error process but at least, di ba, yung, yung, yung time to compute the new effective interest rate, hindi ganun ka taas. Because, di ba, you just need to find the range, di ba, kung uh, uh, in between yung interest na hinanap natin. Okay, so this is the formula. You can use this formula. So, tingnan muna natin, letter A. Ito yung letter A. This is the present value or carrying amount. Ito yung bagong, di ba? Ito yung new carrying amount, di ba? This is the fair value reclassification date or the new carrying amount. This is the starting point of your amortization table. Letter B, you have letter B, lower rate. Okay, so we know that the interest rate is in between two rates. So, this is the lower rate. Like for example, the, the correct interest rate is 8%. So, you need to compute because the correct interest rate, new effective rate is 8%. That's in between 7 and 9%. Okay, so here, this is the lower rate. This is the 7%. And this is the higher rate, like for example, 9%. So, letter D, just, you just need to deduct the higher rate minus the lower rate. And then, E, that's PV using high, higher rate, diba? This is the new present value or carrying amount. So, here, we need to compute the present value. Sorry, this is, this should be lower rate. Okay. Lower rate. Okay, here, we need to compute the present value using the lower rate. So, here, we need to compute, diba? The PV of 1, PV of ordinary annuity of 1. Okay. Multiply it to the principal and to the interest interest uh, received diba? based on the nominal rate. Okay, so same computation uh, using the present values but we need to take note that the number of years, diba? like in this case, like say for example for 5 years, 2 years sa naging FBPL, 3 years sa naging amortized cost. So therefore, the term that we are going to use is 3 years na. The N, the N for example is 3 years na, hindi 5 years. Okay, because, diba, so it started to be classified as amortized cost on the third year, starting the third year. Okay, so ito yung PV ng uh, using lower rate natin. Ito yung PV using higher rate natin. This should be higher. Okay, higher rate. Like, you need to compute the PV uh, of 1 using the higher rate. Like, so, like, for example, 9% and PV of ordinary annuity of 1 of the higher rate. 9%, then, dapat yung N natin is based on the remaining years, diba? So, 3 years for example. Okay, F, H, Okay, so, H natin, uh, E, F, G, G pa tayo. So, G natin, how to compute the G, that's E minus A. Diba? Itong uh, PV, of using lower rate minus the new present value carrying amount. Then yung H natin, that's A minus F, that's new present value minus the PV of uh, present value of using the higher rate. And then yung I natin is G plus H. So plus natin ito, dalang wato. Okay. So to compute the new effective interest rate, new effective rate is uh, either, diba, you will use the higher rate as your base or you will use the lower rate as your base. Okay, so here, so, new effective rate, it's equal higher rate minus diba, H divide I times D. Okay, so if the base is your lower rate, okay, so lower rate yung base, 
So that's uh, lower rate plus G divide I times D. Okay, so that is how you compute the new effective interest rate. Okay, ito yung tinatawag natin interpolation. Okay, let's let's have an example, diba? To prove that uh, this really works. Okay, so this is an example from the book of uh, Valix. Okay, so 21, problem 21, that's 4. So from FBPL to amortized cost. So on January 1, 2019, royalty company purchased 9% bonds with face amount of 6 million. Okay. The bonds mature on January 1, 2024 and were purchased to, uh, for 5,550 to yield 11%. So, kung titignan natin, that's uh, maturity niya, ay, magkana yung years niya is uh, 5 years, diba? 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. Okay, 23. So, the entity classifies the bonds as held for trading. Interest is payable annually every December 31. So, the bonds on 2019 is classified as held for trading under FBPL and the interest is payable annually every December 31. So, Wala tayong accrued interest dito because, di ba, every December 31 yung payment ng interest. Okay, the entity provided the following information about the fair value of the bonds and the effective rate. So, dito, because uh, it's uh, FDPL classification, subsequent measurement is at fair value. So, from 5,500, 5,550,000 on total January 1, 2019. So, meron tayong unrealized loss dito, di ba? So, bumaba yung fair value niya. Okay, then uh, yung effective rate dito 12% on December 31, 2020, di ba? May changes na naman, may unrealized gain tayo dito because nag-increase from 5,450, 6,150. But the effective rate for uh, this period is 8%. Okay, on December 31, 2020, the entity changed the business model for this investment to collect contractual cash flows Composed of principal and interest. Therefore, on December 31, 2020, diba, after two years, diba, so the, the business change, the business model for this instrument, naging to collect na lang, hold to collect contractual cash flows composed of principal and interest. So to hold to collect the SPPI. Diba, so hold to collect. So, therefore, the change of business model is on December 31, 2020. The question now, when is the reclassification date? The reclassification date is the first day of the next reporting period. Therefore, we reclassify the investment not on December 31, 2020, but on January 1, 2021. The first day of the, re first day of the uh, next reporting period after the reclassification. So, this is now our reclassification date. According to the problem, on January 1, 2021, the fair value of the bonds did not change. So, ano ibig sabihin nito? Diba? So, yung fair value on December 31, 2020 is still the same on January 1, 2021. So, in this problem, diba, no need to compute the new effective interest rate. Why? Because given na dito, 8%. Good thing sa problem, binigay yung 8%. What if hindi binigay yung effective rate? The what if hindi binigay yung effective rate? So, we need to compute the new effective interest rate based on this new carrying amount. Diba? This is now the fair value. This is the carrying amount of your investment classified under amortized cost. So, diba? using this formula, present values of 1 and present value of ordinary annuity. So, ito yung gagawin natin. Let's apply dito sa table natin. Magkano yung new present value natin, di ba? So, that's 6,150. Okay, 6,150,000. Okay. So, we know that the correct interest rate is at 8%. Kung titignan natin, di ba, may premium, may discount. Magkano yung uh, carrying amount natin? 6,150. Magkano yung face value natin? 6 million. So, di ba, Yung carrying amount natin is greater than the face value. Therefore, there is premium. Diba? Merong premium dito. Okay, there is premium. We know my premium if the effective interest rate is lower than our nominal rate. We know our nominal rate is 9%. Diba? This is our nominal rate, 9%. Okay. Tapos, since merong premium, magkano yung uh, 
effective interest rate mo. So you know that it should be lower than 9% the nominal rate. The correct answer is 8%, but uh, we're, we're proving here, di ba, how to compute the 8%. Okay, so since there's premium lower than the 9%, so <clears throat> we need to find lower rate. So we know that 8% yung answer, so that's in between the higher rate is 9%. And the lower rate is, uh, let's say, 7%. But you can use 7.5 okay, for illustration purposes. Okay. Then, we can now compute our letter D. Diba? So, our letter D, that's the difference between the two. Magkano uh, to? That's 2% difference. Diba? 9% minus 7%. Uh, dito tayo, let's compute the present values of the investment in bonds using the uh, lower rate, 7%. So using this formula, diba ito? So medyo mahirap dito sa Excel gawin yung, yung amount, but gawin natin yung uh, competition na lang sa calculation natin. So so, using 7% effective interest rate. So, that's you have present value of 1. Okay, so that's uh, 1 plus, magkano yung ginamit natin na interest lower effective rate? That's 0, uh, that's 7%. So, 1 plus 7%, raise to negative. Magkano yung periods natin? Diba? Take note, 5 years, but naging amortized cost after starting for the third year. So, therefore, 3 years yung end natin. So, raise to negative 3. Diba 1 plus uh, 7% raised to negative 3. That's, uh, let's have a PV of 1. Let's round it to 4 decimal places. So that's 0.8163. Okay. How about the PV of ordinary annuity of 1? So let's just follow this formula. That's 1 minus 1 plus 7%. Trace to negative and divide 7%. That's 2 point PV of ordinary annuity of 1. That's... This is 2.6243. Okay. Diba? So, yung PV of 1 natin, multiplied it to the principal amount. So, magkano yung principal natin? That's 6 million. And yung present value of ordinary annuity natin is multiplied by the, diba, interest. That's principal times the nominal rate. So, magkano yung principal? 6 million. Magkano yung nominal rate natin? That's 9%. Ah, meron tayong, kama ba? 6 million times 9%. That's 540,000. Yes, tama. Then, multiply natin. So, magkano yung present value? That's 631492. Okay, yun natin dito. So, copy natin dito. Ito yung present value ng lower rate. Okay, kung titingnan nyo, we are looking for 6150. But if we are using the 7% rate, ano yung present value yung makukupute natin? That's 631492. That's higher compared to the 6150. So, we need to find another rate na mas mababa dito that would equal to 6150. Kaya trial and error to. So, let's use 9%. Diba? Let's compute 9%. So, PV of 1 natin. Okay, PV of 1. Using 9%, that's 1.09 raised to negative 3. That's 0 0.7722. 2. Okay, how about uh, ordinary annuity of 1? That's 
3. Uh, 2.5313. Uh, 6 million. Copy lang natin to. Multiply natin. So, magkano yung present value nito? Uh, actually, that's 6 million. So, because of rounding of decimal places, uh, sige, let's just say, let's copy the 6, can the, the amount. But basically, 9% will equal to the principal amount. That's 6 million. Because uh, we round off the decimal places here. So, magkano to 6 million 102. So, yeah, let's just follow the... Okay, so tama yung ginawa natin, di ba? If we are using 9%, 6 million 102 lang, kulang, hindi 6150. Di ba? If we are using the 7%, lower rate, 63 yung present value, sobra din. So, yung answer natin, that's it in between 7 and 9%. Okay, we know that 8% is the answer, but here we, we are proving that uh, this formula will work. Okay, so that's uh, here. So, that's uh, E minus 6150. Dito naman, 6150 minus to. Then, let's add. Okay, ito yung 314. Na. Okay, 314820. Okay, using this formula... Diba? So, we have higher rate natin. Diba? Higher rate, like 9%. Minus. You have H. Saan yung H natin? Uh, that's H. Divide by ito. Times. 2%. It's say kung gaganang formula. Ah, oh, ito. Ito naman. Uh, let's use this one. That's lower rate. 7% plus ito. Divide 314 times 2%. Uh, diba? Same lang yung lalabas na sagot. So, that's, uh, kung i-round off natin, that's 8%. Diba? Mer meron lang, uh, actually, that's 8.05% because of the rounding off of decimal places. But, uh, you can use the 8%. So, this uh, formula really works for uh, in finding the new effective interest rates. Okay. So, that is how we... Uh, Reclassify FVPL to amortize. So, after you find the new effective interest rate, so, you will continue to your amortization table. So, normal na, doon na, yung ginagawa natin under amortized cost, di ba? So, you need to uh, make the amortization table. You have the principal, uh, you have the interest received, you have the interest income. Ito na yung rate. 8% na yung gagamitin natin rate to compute the, the interest income. Then, you have the amortization. In this case, there is premium. Then, computation of the uh, carrying amount or amortized cost. The second reclassification, you have the from amortized cost to FPP. And ito, from complicated to simple. Why? Because diba, with amortization to without amortization. So, ano yung gagawin natin if this is the case? So, according to par uh, PFRS 9, provides that when an entity reclassifies a financial asset from amortized cost to fair value to profit or loss, the fair value is determined at reclassification date. So, ang gagawin lang natin dito, di ba, amortized cost, we compute at the end of the period or every interest payments, we compute the uh, amortized cost or the carrying amount. So, anong gagawin natin dito if we reclassify to FEPL? We just need to identify the fair value at the date of reclassification. So, di ba, so from... Amortized cost carrying amount to FEPL, which is fair value yung initial measurement. 
So the difference between the previous carrying amount and the fair value is recognized in profit or loss. So basically, we just need to identify magkano yung fair value at the date of reclassification compared it to the carrying amount of the uh, amortized cost. Diba? Under amortized cost, then the difference is recognized in profit or loss. So it's gain on reclassification or loss on reclassification based on the difference of your fair value to reclassification date. Then, succeedingly, diba, yung, yung transaction mo dito, subsequently, you measure the investment at fair value na. So you will recognize unrealized gain, unrealized loss. So it's very important that you have mastered the, the each classification, especially the entries. Because uh, here, it's very necessary when you reclassify the investment. Third, you have the reclassification from amortized cost to, to FVOCI. So dito, di ba, with amortization to with amortization. But dito, iba lang yung measurement natin. Di ba, under amortized cost, subsequent measurement is at amortized cost. We prepare amortization table. Under FVOCI, still we prepare the amortization table but the subsequent measurement is at fair value. Okay, so, so anong mangyayari if this is the case? So, it provides the following if a financial asset is reclassified from amortized cost to FVOCI. Okay, the financial asset is measured at fair value at reclassification date. Because again, the measurement under OCI is at fair value. So, we need to identify the fair value at the reclassification date. The difference between the amortized cost carrying amount and the fair value at reclassification date is recognized in other comprehensive income. So therefore, kanina dito, profit or loss yung difference. Dito naman, yung difference between the carrying amount compared to the uh, fair value is uh, reported or recognized in other comprehensive income because OCI ito, di ba? So any difference is reported under other comprehensive income. Okay, then the original effective interest rate is not adjusted. No need to adjust the effective rate. Why? Because, di ba, nag-amortize ka dito. Nag-amortize ka rin dito under OCI. So, just copy the amortization na that you prepared under amortized cost. Copy lang dito sa OCI. But you need to take note that the subsequent measurement is the fair value, hindi yung amortized cost. Okay, next, this is the case. What if balik lang yung nangyari dito? From OCI to amortized cost. Diba? Uh, ito, we have amortization dito. Mayroon ding amortization dito. So, copy, copy lang din yung amortization. But, yung measurement yung nag-change. Diba? So, that's under OCI and uh, at fair value to amortized cost. Sir, uh, paano mangyayari ito? Diba? In this case. So, since, diba, we own classification happens when there is change in business model. So, from OCI, let's say for example, di ba yung business model dito, it's hold to collect and sell. Then, the business change the business model na naging hold to collect na lang. So, that's why naging amortized cost. Okay, so how do we account for this? The fair value at reclassification date becomes the new amortized cost carrying amount. So, yung fair value at reclassification date because di ba subsequent measurement under OCI is at fair value that is now your new carrying amount under amortized cost. That is the starting point or that is the new carrying amount uh, of your uh, investment in bonds under amortized cost. The cumulative gain or loss previously recognized is in other comprehensive income is ad eliminated and adjusted against the fair value at reclassification date. As a result, the invested is diverted back to amortized cost measurement. So, ang nangyari dito actually guys, uh, parang kinapi mo lang talaga yung ginawa mong amortization kang OCI to amortize cost. Because although there's cumulative gain or loss, but you adjusted the cumulative gain or loss to the account of your investment account. Diba? So as a result, the investment is reverted back to amortize cost measurement. So basically, kung ano yung nandun na carrying amount sa amortization table mo, diba? yun din yung starting point ng... Uh, amount mo under amortized cost. So, you'll just continue the amortization. Okay, so, ito lang. Ito lang medyo yung trick dito because the investment is reverted back to amortized cost. So, yung cumulative gain or loss mo under OCI is eliminated and adjusted against the fair value classification date. So, basically, you adjust it to the investment account. Then, the original effective rate is not adjusted. So, no need to compute effective rate, new effective rate. Why? Because, di ba, 
from with amortization to with amortization. So, same lang yung application, di ba? So, uh, mga gamit mo din yung amortization table mo dito when you reclassify your investment to amortize cost. Next is uh, from FBPL to FBOCI. Okay, ang nandito is... Uh, the financial asset continues to be measured at fair value because diba, the subsequent measurement for this uh, two class classification is at fair value. So, okay lang. The fair value at reclassification date becomes the new carrying amount. Diba? So, medyo complicated din to. Why? Because diba, FBPL, walang amortization, not subject to amortization. But under OCL, although the subsequent measurement is at fair value, but still we need to amortize the premium and discount. We need to prepare amortization table. So, yung fair value at reclassification date, that becomes the new carrying amount. This is now your, uh, this is now the, the starting point of your amortization table. Okay, so let us see, the new effective interest rate must be determined based on the new carrying amount or fair value at reclassification date. So, this time, we need to compute now new effective interest rate. Why? Because, diba, wala tayong amortization dito. Diba? So, under OCI, because may bago tayong fair value, we need to compute a new effective interest rate diba? that would equal to the new carrying amount or fair value at the classification that under OCI. So that we could, we could amortize the discount or premium. So how do we compute? Okay, same. Diba? Interpolation process, you can use this formula. Okay. It is the last one. So, you have reclassification from FDOCI to FPPL. So, medyo, uh, medyo from complicated to simple because, di ba, with amortization to without amortization. So, how do we account if this is the case? So, you have the financial asset continues to be measured at fair value, yes, because subsequent measurement for these uh, two classification is at fair value. And then, the fair value at reclassification date becomes the new carrying amount. Okay, so, di ba, yung, yung fair value ng under OCI is the fair value at the same time to your FBPL. The cumulative gain or loss previously recognized under comprehensive income is reclassified to profit or loss at reclassification date. Take note that this is a debt instrument. This is only applicable for debt instrument. So, di ba, it's the same way like na-realize din yung FBOCI na investment mo, di ba? So, cumulative gains and losses, since it's a debt instrument, once ma-realize, ma-recognize because a change yung classification niya is closed or recycled to your profit or loss account at reclassification date. Because this is again a debt instrument. But if this is an equity instrument, diba, we recycle the cumulative gain or losses to retain earnings. But it's not applicable yung reclassification to equity instrument. So it's only applicable to debt instrument. So so these are the possibilities that could have that uh, could happen diba, in a problem yung reclassification natin for uh, for illustration purposes diba? so you can read the illustrations in the book okay it's uh detailed yung explanation din naman sa book okay because again uh, you will go back talaga doon sa mga sa mga previous chapters diba? how do we account OCI na debt instrument FPPL and amortized cost using effective interest method in computing the subsequent measurement so i guess that's all for this topic so i hope uh, you have learned something thank you